This show is brought to you by adamandeve.com. If you go to adamandeve.com right now and enter glory, the code word glory, G-L-O-R-Y, at checkout, you'll get 50% off almost any item, a free sex swing, and free shipping. Hey, this message is for Cecil and Tom of Citation Needed. Just wanted to let you know the globe of death is still alive. And uh, I was listening to the Cognitive Dissonance ep- or the Citation Needed episode on the way to the Barber Motorcycle Museum, where there was a race this weekend. Guess what was there? The Globe of Death. I actually saw it. Saw people riding inside of it. Now there were nobody throwing anything at each other, but three motorcycles inside a metal mesh globe, riding around, missing each other the whole time. It was. Awesome. Uh, so there is your citation for the citation needed reference to the globe of death. Glory hole, motherfuckers. So I'm listening to your last episode, and literally, as Tom, in the literal sense of the word, literally, literally, as Tom is talking about adding up license plates to try to get to 36, a guy with a license plate with the number 36 and an Illinois plate passed in front of me here in sunny Florida. And I expected when I drove up, I would see Jesus taking the wheel. It would be a miracle. But it wasn't because it's all bullshit. Glory hole. Bye. Help. Somebody help me. I'm stuck here in East Texas. Please get me out of this garbage state. Fucking... Bring me to the glory hall! Hello, this is Natalie. I am calling from right outside Baltimore, Maryland. I am calling because I need to tell you what I think of Sheila Zelensky. Okay, so picture this. You're a lady and you go out on a girl's night with your girlfriend. And one of your friends who is perpetually single gets totally wine drunk and then starts trying to talk about things while remaining somewhat articulate, but making zero sense. And that is that crazy woman. Keep up the good work, and I would like to wish a very fine glory hole to both of you. Thanks, bye. Be advised that this show is not for children, the faint of heart, or the easily offended. The explicit tag is there for a reason. Recording live from Glory Hole Studios in Chicago, this is Cognitive Dissonance. Every episode we blast anyone who gets in our way. We bring critical thinking, skepticism, and irreverence to any topic that makes the news, makes it big, or makes us mad. It's skeptical. It's political. And there is no welcome at. This is episode 382 of Cognitive Dissonance. In this episode, we are joined by our uncles. According to your yeah, website, that's right. you're, you're our uncles. I didn't I didn't know that. Uh, con- no, welcome to the family. <laughs> Why great. did you invite us on such a <laughs> bullshit number? Why can't we uh, come on like 400 or something? It is. It is. Tom just doesn't know the number of the show. I just, so I've been <laughs> saying 382 for 382 <laughs> yeah. episodes. Yeah. So we started at episode 382. That's how you get your lead. Yeah. Uh, we are joined by uh, Mark and Dan from the How to Heretic podcast. Gentlemen, welcome to the glory hole. Thank you. Good Thanks. to be here. Oh, wait, I thought there was no welcome. I thought that that was your. Oh, there's the no welcome, thing. Matt. We yeah. don't care oh. about your knees. Yeah. That's so we just track all yeah. that bullshit yeah. into your place. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, we got to leave your shoes outside. Yeah. yeah. What are you going to do? shoes into the glory hole. You want things to squish between your toes. In oh, there. that's how Ooh, that works. Oh, that's like nice. jellyfish. Yeah. Just I, like, that, like <laughs> jellyfish between your fucking toes. That oh sounds my. wonderful, but what you really want in the glory hole is traction, boys. As, <laughs> as, as a certified homosexual, maybe the first on your show. I don't know. I haven't heard it before. Where do you, 
you get but, your certification uh, yeah. from? Was there like art instruction schools? Do you have like? <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I got it at the Arthur Murray Dance Studio. <laughs> Okay, fair answer. Yeah. Totally fair answer. That's that's entirely <laughs> what is what is, don't even exist. what is the gayest dance? Oh, that's a great question. Oh, the Charleston. Is it <laughs> the sneak attack? Have you ever Shut seen up. the Charleston? It is the it is the silliest <laughs> gayest dance, and everybody, including President Coolidge, were doing it. I thought I thought he was going to come at us with like flamenco or something, but no, he's no, Charleston. It's, it's all Charleston. Right. Oh, all right. Is that where they put their hands in front of their knees and do the wackadoo thing like that? Is that the uh, Charleston? That's part of it. Okay, I think all that's right. part of it. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I yeah. know what you're talking about. The wiggle waggle with the legs. With you the go, legs. Yeah. And you pretend like one hand's moving the other leg. And the basic Charleston is just a step forward, step back, isn't it? It's it, you're kind of kicking your legs out behind you in a little duck thing while you're making oh, circles yes, with you your are, hands. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have a dick in your mouth the whole time. <laughs> That's what makes it that super is, gay. That is what makes it That's gay. That's what makes it I gay. Do, the penis. I do feel like we've just discovered that the 20s were the gayest of all of the yeah. decades. <laughs> and not only that, but that everybody during the Depression looks like they were on meth the way they were dancing. <laughs> Well, they had to be on something. Uh, they outlawed alcohol. You got to I mean, right? got right? choices. Yeah. We cracked that wide open, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no man. alcohol, amyl nitrate yeah. it is. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Let us gaily dance, Meredith. <laughs> now listen, see, I'm going to suck your cock and then you suck my cock and we'll all be a, it'll be a fine day out of the park. I call this establishment the glory hole. Come on in, gentlemen. I was born in the wrong decade. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so speaking of... Uh, I don't know, gay. Let's talk about right wing watch. <laughs> <laughs> this story. That was a great transition. I feel like that no, segment and was this, smooth. This is about gay. It is. It is about ex gays. Uh, yeah, Peter LaBarbera sure. is outraged at the gay couple on Star Trek. Uh, okay, fine. You know, no story there. But delightfully, he's wondering where the ex gay characters <laughs> <laughs> are. Huh. You know, I'm wondering that too. Yeah. It seems like in the future, that's going to be all the rage. Yeah. Because just. Like people will turn gay just so that they can come back as ex-gay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm I'm really hoping that uh, you know, when we can travel across the universe at like faster than light speed and a, a doohickey can make a turkey dinner in two seconds, <laughs> and we have met a zillion different species with all the different foreheads <laughs> that what what translates is a self hatred from the Iron Age. I hope that that remains. It does feel like that's what we're looking at. We got a future of a beautiful interstellar travel and uh, really monitoring everybody's sexual behavior. I love that idea. It's like it's it, it's like all right, we we invented a warp drive. Yeah. But I'm curious what genitals yeah. you like to play with. I, really I just love the idea of, of foreheads, like different foreheads. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. And, it's, and you're right, yeah. because the only difference on Star Trek between the aliens is how bulbous or not bulbous their forehead is. Also skin but, hue. Yeah. Like it's, I guess that's it's a, true. It's a hue. It's like, are you green? If so, how green? Yeah. Are you like a forest <laughs> green, for example? Or Like if you fuck someone's forehead, does that make you gay? Yeah. Like I can tell you no. That's a no experience. <laughs> It's a whole thing. I don't know. I, 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 I got to do say fuck or yeah, finish on. Yeah. I don't remember. Well, I mean, either way. Yeah. <laughs> Does teabagging count? I don't know. I don't know what the rules are in interstellar gay. It's never gay if you high five afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. You know, here's how I can verify that that's true. You can't get Mark to high five somebody. Won't do it. He just refuses. <laughs> you can't. He refuses. We're gay. I, we should have more self-respect in there. <laughs> high five <laughs> And any any gays listening, what, I don't know if you guys you have a, a gay listener. Like yeah. <laughs> you have to have more fucking self respect. High fiving is for straight guys and lesbians, and <laughs> cool because you love sports, and that's that's what you do, right? We shake hands, we hug, we have other we have other means of affection that I could show you if this was television, <laughs> but. I'll post some stuff on YouTube later. He's, he's oh, stroking good, yeah. me lovingly right now yeah. as we speak. That's <laughs> not, not really lovingly. It's just an obligation. Oh, uh, well, there you go. To be outraged about Star Trek, I, what I loved about because I listened to that whole stupid clip. Yeah. And I do love that, uh, you know, he's, he's doing the standard complaint about gay activists are never satisfied. They always want more, more, more. I'm like, uh, ye 
until they get to equal, right? Yeah. Right. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we they need more and more and more until that point. There's a there is an end stop yeah. on that. <laughs> and I'm totally happy to take that criticism from right wing Christians who They've got what they want. They don't want anymore. Right. Yeah. They're, they're, they're set. They're never complaining about not having enough. I gotta I set. gotta say, I think that this is the absolute perfect place for uh ex gays is a work of fiction. I think that's an right? absolute perfect place for that. Because I'd it, watch that show. Yeah. I, well, I gotta uh, say, like, I know gay people and I know straight people. I don't know any ex gay people. Or they're just like, yeah, I am an ex gay. Mm -hmm. Not they, right. Who even defines themselves as ex-gay? I know we were joking before about like trying out the gay, <laughs> like, but it doesn't make you ex-gay. Yeah. <laughs> it makes you like bi curious or what yeah. have you, or like, but not ex-gay. Like, oh, I was gay. I and know then a lot I woke of people up one day and I was like, oh, it's fucking Wednesday. Now I'm not gay anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and 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 that's what you know. That's what good television would be is just a bunch of sad ass motherfuckers like Mike Pence going, I'm so happy now. This <laughs> <laughs> is wonderful. Now that the Lord has delivered me to your vagina. <laughs> Mother. <laughs> Mother. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that dude creeps me the fuck out, you man. Just imagine like a, a Mike Pence sad sack just moping yeah. around the Enterprise. <laughs> everybody else is discovering shit and fucking green things and you know, having a good time and guys in red jerseys are just getting snuffed on every new planet. Yeah. <laughs> He's just walking around like, I'm so straight. I don't know. There's one Christian left in the future and he's flogging himself for being queer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you have on that ship though, you have Trump bringing all the red shirts in so he can shoot them in front of everybody and nobody cares. Nobody cares at all. He can I could shoot, shoot a red shirt. I could shoot a red shirt. Me. Doesn't even matter. Somebody bring in a intergalactic wall, can't we? Yeah. Can't we just keep... <laughs> The Ferengis need to be kept <laughs> out. Stay on your side of the galaxy, yeah. Jesus. I'm going to solidify the rings of Saturn. You will not pass. <laughs> <laughs> has the gay episode, Has the have those characters been introduced? I've only watched the pilot. I've oh, only I have no idea. Yeah, I, I, never, I, I didn't watch. I've never watched any Star Trek, to be honest. I've only seen like the movies. What oh, the fuck? You, saw, never watched, and you never watched I any never of watched the shows? I never watched any of the shows. I've only seen, I've seen like a lot of the movies though. I would watch them when I got sick. So like I, I'd, I'd get sick and stay home from school or whatever. And there'd be like a Star Trek marathon. Oh, I guess I watched the old ones with the tights and Kirk. Ooh, I remember those. That yeah. was gay. Where Everybody would, knows that one. That was super I mean, gay. here's the thing. It wasn't when Kirk was banging some green chick. It wasn't gay no. then. Because I remember, <laughs> I remember being a young man and being like, I want a green chick sometimes. There was an episode where Kirk was fighting that alien, that green, like not the green chick, but some basically like modified Godzilla costume it was alien that dinosaur thing on that planet. Right. And it was the gayest fight you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> they were basically <laughs> slap fighting each other. I don't think we're allowed to use that as an adjective guys. I think uh, we're. I'm going to go to Mark on this ruling. I'm going to allow it. All right. <laughs> we're going to allow it. Yeah. We're good. See, I wish I had my own, like where, gay we gonna gay? where I could just say, is, am I allowed to call this gay? Can and we then, hire? Yeah. Can we hire a? It, like, yeah. Can we hire you on as a token gay? Like yeah. How does this work? While? Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you guys just, whenever that comes up, just DM me. Okay. No <laughs> worries. <laughs> I'll let it's you like know. Three in the morning. <laughs> it's like just sting up <laughs> these motherfuckers. What, you've asked, what are you doing at three in the morning that you need to know if it's gay? <laughs> asked me. Said, okay, I've been on actually, Grindr for four hours. Actually, is this to be gay? honest, yeah. <laughs> If it's three in the morning and you're still doing it, it's gay. If you're wondering, you you went gay, right? Did you notice what you named your own studio? Your own pro I mean, hey, hey, hold on now. The the magic of the glory hole is that it's anonymous. You have no idea what's on the other side. You don't know. Who, you don't know if it's a guy's dick or a girl's dick coming through. <laughs> Could be. Could be. Uh, it's can 2017. I, I yeah. It's a brand can new world. I don't dirty judge, secret. buddy. That's there's a dirty little secret, and that is that. It's always a guy on the other side of the glory hole. <laughs> Every single time, girls don't won't do it. <laughs> so, I mean, enjoy it. It's yeah, still going to no, be good. It, it it's do. probably going to be better. They know what it feels yeah. like to have a dick. It's probably going to be the best real job you've ever had in your life. But it's a guy. I like to think it's Jesus always on the other side it's of the glory hole. Jesus. Well, you know, I, I think the fucking beard hair gives it away. You know, <laughs> like when you're oh, like, God, it feels so good. Velcroy on the other side. Not, that's, <laughs> yeah, you especially know if, you're, if you're going, uh, you're not beyond shaving a while. You <laughs> right. get stuck you to the pull wall. Back, you're like, uh oh, uh -oh. Yeah, you know it's uh -oh. Jesus when you hear all that robe shuffling. It's like <laughs> oh, <laughs> so much fabric in there. He's What's just going letting on? you fuck the stigmata in his hand. You know, oh so, wonderful, yeah. that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> 
I like yeah, his he letting. He's the weirdest hand jobs. Yeah. It goes straight through. I don't know. <laughs> so we're going to be joined by uh, Mark and Dan from How to Heretic at the end of the program. So stick around uh, for an interview about their show later on. In the name of Jesus, we speak that. So this, this story is from uh, LGBTQ Buzz. Uh, Catholic Archbishop says domestic violence is caused by women not obeying men. Well, uh, that's a that's a terribly enlightened point of view. Let's let's actually I want to I want to read what he actually said so that we're not taking this uh, out of context. So he says, he told churchgoers in his sermon, "quote The majority." of cases of domestic violence happen because the woman's partner does not accept them or rejects them for not accepting their demands or often the macho reaction, macho reaction, beating a woman is a macho reaction mm. comes about because she asked for a separation. He also said many relationship problems occurred because the couple were not in a quote, true marriage. Um, and, and he criticized the practice of quickie divorces. Quickie divorces. Is that like, is that like you set you, you sit across from the judge and they have one of those chest timers you have to hit. <laughs> so while you're going through discovery, you're just like, and I have this, okay. And I have this, and then they just keep tapping it. Is that how this works? No, no, no. It's what it is, is a divorce where only one person comes. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually why you get a divorce. <laughs> The, the idea that this Catholic archbishop, first of all, the idea that an archbishop has any idea how interpersonal no, relationships yeah. in a marriage yeah. work. Right. Right. Who's listening to yeah. this guy? Yeah. Who's listening to this fucking weird celibate? <laughs> Someone said. Who cares? They, they, uh, they, uh, social media, a bunch of people on social media. And one person wrote the archbishop of Toledo has linked domestic violence to couples not being in a proper marriage. So says the celibate man who believes in a ghost. <laughs> Do, do you not wonder sometimes when you read this crazy shit, like, like these guys are so out of touch. They are so out of touch. Do they, do they not have anybody who's like, okay, no, we don't say that. That's not what we don't say that. Like, is there nobody vetting the kind of crazy shit that they say? Is there well, no, well, you know, it's crazy too, because this guy, this guy here is an archbishop, right? So how that, high up in the I, in the I, in the system is I an archbishop? I think archbishop is right below cardinal, and then cardinal is below pope, right? So oh, it's really high yeah, up. It's pretty high up. I'm pretty sure Whoa. that's. I'm pretty and, and 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 please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Catholic the Catholic hierarchy goes pope to cardinals, cardinals to archbishops, archbishops to bishops, and then bishops to, uh, I guess priests Rooks or something or. No, they go. They only go forward and back. So <laughs> not side to not side, side or to back, side in back in time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they like to they like to grope all the really small pieces on the board. <laughs> so <laughs> you know, while you're vetting the guy working his way up, I mean, isn't misogynist one of the tests? Like where you just like hold up a bunch of fucking ink blots, and if he's like, "I see a guy beating a woman," you're just like, "Yeah, maybe you shouldn't be this guy." I just, I just, I guess, I feel like. Like the concept of like, you just shouldn't beat women. Yeah. It's just really easy. Yeah. You know, you shouldn't like, beat people. Right. Period. Exactly. Beat, right. You don't exactly. Beat people. Exactly. Yeah. Right. But it's like, it's like, it's such a low bar. Like the standard is just so low. Like don't abuse people. Yeah. And then there's a period at the end of that sentence. It's only three words, you yeah. know, like we, we don't have, it's not even a nuanced issue. It's not like, well, yeah. well, when can I, well, what if they weren't, being nice. Like, no, we just don't abuse people. Well, and the, and the Catholic church doesn't know how not to blame the victim though. They're really they good do, at They it. do it with the, with the people that they rape, the kids that they rape yeah. and they diddle and they do it with, you know, the clearly they're doing it here too, where they're just like, well, uh, you know, she didn't have such a big fucking flappy mouth. Um, what the <laughs> fuck? You know, I mean, he's clearly like, you know, it, this is the kind of guy who'd be like, well, what was she wearing? And for the United States of America to put the power of the federal government and all of its money and resources behind this transgender movement, it is just nothing short of insanity. So this story is from the Huffington Post. Trans teen sues Catholic health organization after being denied 
medical care. Uh, so this story is about a uh, 17 year old transgendered boy. Um, and this, this transgendered boy needed to get an operation. He get a breast operation, um, a chest operation and his insurance said, go. And his doctor said, go. And the hospital said, no, because the, the kid's trans. And, and the hospital is Catholic. Right. Yeah. And, and the reason I wanted to talk about this um, is that in so many areas, the only available access to, to medical care are these private religious hospitals. And the idea that they can discriminate on religious grounds is one of the problems with the idea that, you know, a provider of public services like hospital services. And we talked about this in relation to uh, adoption services as well. When these when these private providers of what are really publicly consumed services, such as healthcare, when they are allowed to discriminate based on religious grounds, the public suffers because they get to decide from a moralistic standpoint who they'll treat, who they'll care for, how they'll care for them. So the the, the public is relying on these institutions, and I I don't know how you cannot look at those things and say, all right, you have a responsibility to the greater good and you have to respond appropriately as an organization serving the people, serving the public or cut that shit out. Yeah. I mean, what's to stop them from, from giving women contraception? You know what I mean? Like, like the Catholic church does not like rubbers. Right. And they don't like, uh, they don't like the pill and they don't like all these other things that, you know, we use to, as contraception. They don't like the day after pill. They certainly don't like abortions. Are they good with pulling out? You know, or that's stuff? actually, no, pulling out is there. They call it the rhythm method, Tom. I'm not even kidding. Wait, I, we I got a booklet. Around. We got a booklet when Sarah and I got married in the Catholic church, we got a booklet and the booklet was on the rhythm method. Did it say, did it say come on our tum tum or what? No. Like, <laughs> That's it. It just said, it just said, if you squirt it all over, then it doesn't get inside of her. And that's all good, I guess. No, but they, 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 they talk about how you have sex when you should not, it's not pulling out. It's just like, you shouldn't have sex during her fertile period, during the times that she can get pregnant and you should follow this, this system. So of dur during the time fucking, where she's most likely to be most horny in the yeah, month, yeah, like yeah. when her body's like, oh, I want to get fucked. You're like, oh. I'm going to go ahead and pass on that. Just be like, no, Said nobody you're good. ever. You're good. Right? You're good. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They call that, so that's not pulling out. It's just yeah. abstaining during, during the fertile period. Yeah. Is when that she's like, when is? she's like, she's like watching UFC and like sitting on the banister or whatever. <laughs> yeah. That time of the month. Yeah. That's, right? that's when it, yeah. Yeah. I know what. Yeah. I'm going to, the Catholics said I can't, yeah. oh, fuck that. I'm going to go take a bath <laughs> again. <laughs> Honey, that's your fourth bath today. <laughs> I like the shower head. Is trusting God important? It's the only thing that gets favor from him. He doesn't respond to pain or tears or heartache. He only responds to being believed. Oh, God, this is right wing watch. Uh, this is Dave Coach. Doc Coach. Not a coach. Dobbin Meyer. He's, uh, he agrees. I'm not sure who he agrees with. Oh, he agrees with Pastor Manning. I'm sorry. That's the company you want to keep. Can you imagine a moment in your life where you're like, you know who I agree with? <laughs> if, if Pastor Manning released a video called I fucking hate eggnog, I'd be like, I'm bathing in eggnog you know what? tonight. I, I might have misjudged eggnog. <laughs> I really would. <laughs> hey, I, is there a single life choice that you would not question no. if you were in agreement no. with Pastor Manning? All right. He says that uh, God killed those people who died in Las Vegas. Oh, so this is on his okay. past assault. Oh. Interesting. I listened to Pastor Manning yesterday. I'm listening. <laughs> On purpose? <laughs> First mistake. First, I listened. I was just checking them out. Yeah, geez. See what? what are you you trying to horn in on our business, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> I want to see what that hate-filled uh, weirdo says about I, semen I haven't, lattes. I haven't heard anything from him. I wonder if it's because he's anti-Trump that people aren't. Oh, I don't know. We should go. We should look for his stuff. I haven't though. seen him on Right Wing Watch in a while. And I think the reason why is because the crazy shit he says before was all about Obama and right. stuff. And now since Obama's not in there and I know he hates Trump, he calls him like the the devil or the Antichrist or something. So I know he hates Trump. So we got to go hunting because uh, I think it's time. I think it's time, uh, Cecil. OK, maybe we'll look for one. Him in a while. Got to get him back on. So well, he said yesterday, love, I love, I love truth. I love truth. That's what he said yesterday. Was I, 
<laughs> what person doesn't love truth? Do they both hate soccer? Yeah. Is that what he's going to get after here? They just like, can we Pastor just bond? Manning is just exhausted so chasing can, after anything. Can we bond over hating soccer? Pastor Manning said, hey, we can deny this all we want to. But God killed those people. God's a douchebag. Yeah, God sucks. Gosh. But I mean, what's doesn't weird God is, kill everybody who dies though? Yeah, what's weird though is is God had to get all those automatic rifles to kill all those people. <laughs> God had a bump stock. Does God have to show his ID when he goes to those uh those gun shows to buy 12 <laughs> to 20 guns at a gun show or does he they just walk in and like and he's like norm. There's like God. Oh, there you hey. go. Oh, uh, you look it's it's like when you go to the like the Dunkin Donuts or something they know your order. Yeah. You know, it's like <laughs> Hey, it's God. I got, I got an AK-47 yeah. for you. Hold on. There's a Colt M4 you're going to love. I got six over here. different bump stocks all oh, for man. you. Oh, man. This yeah. one, you're going to love this one. You can shoot lightning bolts at a speed you can't even understand. God killed them. He let those people happen. God killed them. And he said, you go back to the Old Testament, and you go through that Old Testament all you want to, and you know what you're going to find out? God ordering people to kill people. He said, God orders people to be killed. Yeah, well, then he's a monster. Well, and, and I mean, that's just true, though. It, Read it, the Old Testament. And, right. Yeah. He's fucking. Because he's a barbaric war yeah. god. He's right? like he's a, a bronze yeah. war god. He's a bronze age war god right. or a mafia boss. I'm not <laughs> sure which. You yeah. know, I, I, I was reading this transcript earlier and I, I was just thinking like, okay, if that were true, and I'm not saying it is because it's just obviously not. It's nonsense. But if that were true. It would still be monstrous, yeah. right? You would still be looking at a God who was not worthy of worship, right? Who was to be feared and despised, yeah. not feared and loved. And we've reached a point here in America where there are a lot of people going to be killed. There are a lot of people going to be killed. Why? Because it's the judgment of God coming on America. God. He's got to send a hillbilly to do it. God's coming on America. Oh, gross. Again? Mm. Again, who I thought has to eat the biscuit after he's done with it. <laughs> Who's that? Well, I think the current one is Nate, right? <laughs> That's the current coming on America. We had what Rita yeah. and Harvey. Yeah. So, you know, at least it's a nice bisexual. I like it. It's kind of like a menage a trois going on right? here. Yeah. I'm just pleased everybody's coming. Yeah. You know, it just seems it's not selfish. You know, come on, literally <laughs> get it to him right in the eye, <laughs> right in the eye. Hold it open. Yeah. Hold it open. <laughs> the judgment of God. And if you think that you as a Christian are exempt, you think there are any Christians ever killed there in that thing on in Las Vegas? You think you're exempt because you happen to be a Christian? You think you're exempt? So God's indiscriminate. That's weird. I, uh, huh? He's almost like a person with a gun. Uh, it's so That's weird. Strange. It's almost like exactly what you would expect from wildfires yeah. and hurricanes and, and maniacs and random fire right. into a group. Right. Yeah. 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 I, I love the idea that God's judgment, like his, he's calling on judgment. Um, just, just at whoever. Yeah. Just, no. yeah, just yeah. what this is. I'm going to teach you a lesson yeah. by beating your neighbor's dog. You, like, bet, you better be what? right with me. That's well, all I'm saying. Yeah, but even if you are right with God, no, that, but that, no, he but, still but kills you. No, but that's his. That's the thing is, is I think this guy believes the God hype more than uh, most people because I think a lot of people are like trying to extend this life as much as they can, do as much as they can. Jim Baker is a perfect example. Let's extend this life, even though you know heaven's supposed to be super tits. Right, you know he's still gonna try to extend this life even through the apocalypse times with his buckets. <laughs> right. He's one of the few honest ones where he's just like, nope, get killed. Yep. But like, I think, I think he's cool with getting killed. Okay, I think but, he's okay with heaven. But that's the part I'm confused about because then what am I worried about? Yeah. <clears throat> right? Well, you got to get right with him because you got to go to the right place. That's what he's talking about. That's his whole argument is get right with God now. So when a maniac shoots so, me. Because God is sending maniacs to kill, kill everybody. And you better make sure you're right with that maniacal crazy person who's sending other crazy people to kill you. Should you run from the bullets? Mm, I don't know. What's the point? What if you're right with God? Yeah, that's what I mean. I don't know. Like, should you just, or should you just be like, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. I'm going to just stand here, there was wave a, my arms and jump up and down. There was a guy flipping one off. I don't know if you saw, but there was a video of the guy, like when the shooting started, <clears throat> he's just flipping off the... Really? Yeah, just standing there. You can't hit, you can't. You're not going to hit that guy. How are you going to hit that guy? You can't hit that guy. Right. It's random fire. It's random it's fire. random fire. So how are you going to hit him? You're 400 know, yards man. away. But there's something so fucking supremely metal about yeah, that. It really like, is. I don't even know what to say. Like, that's yeah. metal as that fuck. That is metal as fuck. Holy yeah. shit. That is metal as fuck. That's that, also a lot of drinks in that guy. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, right? Because you happen to live 
somewhere out in the country. You really think you're exempt from that? Because you live somewhere out in the country? Yeah, well, I do like them country folk. Like, wouldn't the judgment of God be so much more effective if it was selective? Right. Wouldn't that send a message much yeah. more immediate? And it's like, like he's got the Scantron sheet and he's just marking every box. He's right, just like, yeah, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm all got A through E. I'm going to spell these. my name, G. <laughs> I drew a puppy in bubbles. <laughs> What's after G? No, no. And so he, he says, number one, you better get yourself saved. And you better get those around you that you love saved because God's going to be killing a lot of people. Well, he's, <laughs> so hold on. So what you got to do is get yourself saved because I won't save you. Yeah, right. That's the key. Well, I'm not going to save you. I, eh. God's going to be killing a lot of people. God kills all the people. Yeah. On a long enough timeline. Yeah. We all die. Yeah. And if God's responsible for all life and death, it's like, yeah, the message didn't change. Yeah. It's super fucking consistent. It's just a matter of whether it's a heart attack or a, you know, AK-47, I guess. Yeah. Now, we don't like that theology, do we? Huh? We don't like that theology. But this sure seems pretty good to me. It also is honest. I mean, to be real, to be perfectly honest, that's probably the most honest theology that you're going to hear. If you're yeah. going to, if you're going to, if you're going to incorporate all that Old Testament, that's probably the pretty, that's the, probably the closest philosophy you could have with God. Yeah. The, the part I want to focus on though is where he says, that's pretty good to me. Yeah. You know, it's like, these guys like that. Yeah, no, they're, they totally get off on yeah, that Yeah, he's good with that. Yeah. Well, Tom, it's, uh, it's coming up on Halloween soon and yeah. there's got to be no better place to get a slutty outfit. <laughs> In my I, opinion, I love Halloween. I, Halloween Eve.com. Halloween is one of the greatest uh, holidays that we have to convince people to dress like fucking hookers and dirty nurses. Yeah. And you know, the, the problem is you go to the local Halloween store, that shit is full price. Adam and Eve.com. Yeah. 50%, 50 off, off almost, almost any almost item. Any item. You can dress up like a naughty yeah. damn near anything. Yeah. and Or just be naughty. You know what you could do, too, is you could dress as a ghost, get in your sex swing that they're going to give you for free, and then you could fly across the room. <laughs> so that's a possibility. Ooh, yeah. nothing, it's spooky. Nothing is set. You, you could have sex in the sheet. Yeah. Like one of those like yeah. crazy Amish sheets. Exactly. Right? And cleanup's easier after sex. <laughs> you can have sex in a sheet. Wait, you're supposed to clean up after sex? Hmm. Maybe they do. I yeah. don't know. That's what the hose in the bedroom is for. Uh, duh. <laughs> <laughs> but you can get it at adamandeve.com. <laughs> but seriously, if you go to adamandeve.com, uh, type in glory at checkout, you'll get 50% off any item, uh, free sex swing, free shipping, and some free stuff. So check it out, adamandeve.com. Remember to use glory at checkout. All right, so this is Right Wing Watch. This is uh, on Breitbart. Louie Gomer. Gomer. Better go get it. Hey. He says, abortion is sacrificing kids to the idol of self-centeredness. The idea is when an unborn child can feel pain, then there shouldn't be an abortion. And that's uh, the scientific testimony indicates around 20 weeks. Uh, they definitely. I'm glad they're following t science now. Like this is the science that we're going to follow. They're, they're right real now. willing to use science when it has any convenience to their exactly. narrative. When it when it backs my right. narrative up, I am tote science. Right. Yeah. I'm 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 really down with that. Yeah. The vast, vast, vast yeah. majority right. of abortions occur way before that 20 yeah. week. Mark. Yeah. Way, way, way before that 20 week mark. And the 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 late tri the third trimester, um, late what they call late term abortions, they are not only abundantly rare. But they are only ever performed in cases where there's significant medical emergency, yeah, right. you know, going yeah. on. It's, it's they're not done as it's it not. Means. A, it's not just like I just I'm bored of being pregnant. Right, exactly. Yeah. It's not like oh yeah. I'm uncomfortable. Well, I don't fit in my dresses anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, it. that's that is a myth of the right wing nuts. Right. Sure, that there's you know people out there at seven and a half months. It's like oh no, change my mind, and yeah. then just ha you know that's not yeah that's not happening. Yeah, it's just not. I mean it. Has it ever happened? Maybe. Maybe. Right. Yeah. Because anything in large yeah. enough numbers. But in terms of like how big of an actual problem or issue is yeah. this, it's de minimis to yeah. the point of absurdity. We see that they uh, can feel pain. And so we got that passed. Um, and, and actually, there's also another bill, the heartbeat bill. Uh, it doesn't wait till 20 weeks. It's more like uh, five to six weeks, which... Even though it doesn't have an exception for rape or incest, Jesus, it's like <sighs> what a monster. five or six, five weeks, or six you weeks. You might not even know you're no, pregnant with no 
exception for rape or incest. This is a this is that's an abortion a, ban. This that is, is what that's this all is. it is. Yeah. This is a ban yeah. by any other that's word. That's all it is. Right? Five or six weeks, it's entirely possible to not know you're fucking pregnant. Exactly. Because you, you could, you know, especially if, you know, you, you like the way your periods play out, you might not. Right? right. You'd be like, oh, I'm a couple weeks late. You know, because you might have had. Not a, everybody cycles yeah. on, on, a, on, exactly. a, on a regular schedule. Yeah. The fuck? Could you imagine if somebody. Five, yeah. six, well, five fucking weeks. Five weeks is. That's, Holy shit. Yeah. You better, you better just like every couple of days, just piss on a stick then. You just know what I mean? Like your concept, just, you might as well just like, like throw a urinal cake that's made of that stuff that changes color if you're pregnant. Or something. How much of this shit do you think is just judging women's sexuality? Absolutely. That's I, I, right. Yeah. It's like, it's 90% yeah. of it. Let's cut, like cut all that fucking babies be babies bullshit. This is just yeah. judging women's sexual behavior yeah. and trying to control and women's it, sex and sexuality. And it's because they're the only ones who face the consequences of, of birth. Yes, you've got, uh, you know, about six weeks and you know when you're pregnant uh, within six weeks. Uh, you might not. You might. Yeah, you, you might you not. fucking it's might a, not. It's just not a... That's not a, always true. You know, fucking, there's a fucking there's a show where a woman shit not a baby at like 36 <laughs> weeks. Some tubby woman is just on the <laughs> toilet and just Jesus, man. shits out a baby. That <laughs> happened. And this is a TV show about it. I, six I don't know fucking true weeks. Is, but yeah, six weeks. Woman could, I'm like a woman could be spotting yeah. and think it's... I mean, what Jeez. the fuck? You guys, there's so many reasons why that's wrong. There's so many... This, this dude just doesn't and want I've women given, to fuck. I've given birth to food babies with a heartbeat. <laughs> so. <laughs> can and uh, you you certainly can and so even for them there is a way out. But you know how do we determine if somebody's alive? What's the first thing you do? You run over it and check for heartbeat. And yeah, that's just that's like a bare minimum of of whether or not we're going to do another battery of tests. Cause I think the, I think the baby is alive heartbeat Venn diagram you're building. <laughs> it's a little it's a, skewed. It's a little weird. Yeah. I, I love it. Like that's the first thing, like the first thing I would do if I thought so I would check if they were breathing. Yeah. So first of all, I, 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 I disagree with you. Like that's yeah. not the first thing I would do. Like, fuck, yeah. are they breathing? Yeah. Okay. And then maybe I check for heartbeat, and then I'll check to see if they're a fucking fetus. Yeah. Because if they're a fucking fetus, then they're well, not a person yet. Hey, this is super easy. Okay, I run over and I check that they have a heartbeat. Cool. I call the ambulance. They come and they get them, and then they find they're in a vegetative state. Right. Okay. Yeah. We talked about this yeah, before. It's a like, vegetative state. Okay. Well, yeah. well, do they have a fucking do not resuscitate? Because guess what? If they don't, then they're Tom Pettying. They're fucking way to fucking, uh, you know, whatever. They're fucking, free falling. They're going to Heartbreak Ridge or another song that he's sang. I don't know any of these songs. I can't can't pun out on any of the songs. So I don't know anything that he's saying. So I, it, it, we talked about this before. Yeah. Like my line is isn't viability. My line yeah. really is is whether or not there's higher brain function. Yeah, right. You know, because that's the line we draw with yeah. walking around people. Sure. Like if I'm drawing that line with grandma, I'm going to draw that line with the fucking baby. Exactly. So there's, and there's, and so this, this idea like, oh, well it's breathing. Okay. Well, so what? Or it's, that's it's a brain. So what? It's shit. got a brain stem. Great. Yeah. Right. And so the idea is if a heartbeat's detected, then the life must be pre protected. Uh, but the national right to life says they wouldn't support that. Uh, I don't really understand why. This guy sounds drunk guy. all the time. He sounds he sounds like he's trying to reason with you to get his keys back. <laughs> right? All the time. That's what he sounds like. <laughs> this is a guy who, to me, he sounds like he just had a stroke. Like right now. Like he's like, like currently yeah, he's, having a he's, stroke. He's mid stroke. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Louis, the left Gomer, side of <laughs> Louis Gomer constantly mid stroke. The yeah. left side of his face yeah. has fallen off. Exactly. That's how yeah. much of a stroke he's had. <laughs> Everything he smells is burnt toast. <laughs> Everywhere he goes, it's burnt toast yeah. and orange marmalade. His golf game handicap, one stroke. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they were the ones pushing the pain capable bill. And those of us that are the what pain capable bill, if they're capable of feeling pain, pain. capable. I like, that. I just thought it was like a new, like a uh, uh, politically correct way of saying <laughs> someone can feel pain. I'm pain capable. Hey, what yeah. about, what about, people that are born that can't feel pain at all Those people are can you just kill them at any time they're pain incapable <laughs> right <laughs> what i mean like can you just abort them at like 30 you just like oh, i'm sorry the law says truly pro-life you know we we vote for any kind of bill 
uh, the pain capable, the uh, heartbeat, whatever it is, but we can't get the heartbeat to the floor because uh, National Right to Life says they don't support it. So I, I don't know why. Uh, it's hard to imagine, except maybe it wasn't their idea. But uh, but those of us that are truly pro-life, we rejoice in getting any bill passed that will save a life. And this will save, you know, 5 to 10 percent of uh, the abortions that are done. It's going to save 5 to 10 percent of the abortions that are done. So embedded in there is that 90 to 95 percent of abortions take place already under that threshold. Yeah. Well, right. well before 20 right. weeks. Right. Yeah. Because they so want it. So solving they a non-issue. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. They're, they're working their asses off to solve basically a complete non-issue. Yeah. Abortions for all. <laughs> Very well. No abortions for anyone. <laughs> hmm. Abortions for some. Miniature American flags for others. Yay! So this story is from time.com. A uh, pro-life congressman won't seek re-election after reports that he urged his mistress to get an abortion. So I, lo- I love these uh, holier-than-thou guys, mm-hmm. right? I yeah. love these guys. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I'm talking about the guys that like go to the men's bathroom and tap their feet. Right? Is that the kind of guy right? you're talking about? Exactly. Huh. The guys who are like, oh, it's just... Snorting blow off a of fucking hooker's ass yesterday, yeah. and then I'm going to give this sermon on family values. I'm <laughs> just like, really, really, that's the plan. Yeah, that's yeah, because you have to sleep at night, this right? Happens like, all the time. It happens constantly. So this fucking guy, um, he's a pro-life Pennsylvanian Republican. Um, I think that's redundant. Um, Tim Murphy. So he urged his mistress to have an abortion. This is a guy who is trying to make it harder and harder for other people. To have. It's it's like. Do as I fucking say, not as I fucking do. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. This is the the lady doth protest too much stuff. You know what I mean? Like you're right. constantly protesting, constantly putting up this false smoke screen. And at the same time, you're like, yeah, I, I urged my mistress to get an abortion because it's because it's because in 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 your case, in some other cases, it might be because of rape, it might be because of incest, it might be because of, you know, and I don't know that those are those are the main reasons why people get abortions or, you know, there's there's other problems and other issues that women have that they wind up getting an abortion. In your case, it was, I just don't want this to get out into the world. Yeah. It, like, in your case, it's not even to the level of rape or incest. Right. Yeah. He's just got a mistress yeah. and he doesn't want to have a baby with the mistress. It's just Which really looks, inconvenient to have I a baby. I don't care. Yeah. Right. Let me be clear about yeah. my stance on this. I don't care that he's fucking around. It means nothing to me. He's not violating my fucking contract with him. Right. I don't care that he's fucking around. I don't care that his mistress didn't want to have a baby or he I didn't yeah, want to. I don't, I don't care. Like that none of that abortion. matters. Yeah. All that I care about is that he's trying to restrict other people's access to abortion when at the same time out of the fucking other side of his fucking mouth. Yeah. You know, he's, he's sending a text message. Let me read the text exchange. Um, so the, the, the newspaper, the Pittsburgh post Gazette got a hold of this text exchange. <clears throat> she writes, you have zero issue posting your pro-life stance all over the place when you had no issue asking me to abort our unborn child just last week when we thought that was one of the options. Later, he writes in response, I get what you say about my March for Life messages. I've never written them. Staff does them. I read them and wince. I told staff, don't write anymore. I will. So it turned out she wasn't actually pregnant, so she didn't need the abortion. So fine. But like, this is a guy like he didn't write back. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? I never asked you like that's not in the fucking text exchange. Yeah. Right. Which if you never asked your fucking mistress to get an abortion and she wrote you a text about this, you would write back something like the fuck. Yeah. You talking about You sound crazy. Right. Why are you sending? You clearly sent this to the wrong person. Right. This shouldn't be for me. Yeah. So everybody else that's in a situation that they, you know, feel like an abortion might be an option for them. All those other people. They got it. They, according to his worldview, they got to eat that shit, right? Because yeah. that's what his politics exactly. say. Yeah. He doesn't even care. He doesn't care. His response is like, I don't even care. It's just yeah, that's just the fucking pro this is, Republican this is, message. This is what my this is what my party wants of me, right. and I have to do what they want. I'm not an individual. I'm yeah. a I'm a person who follows my party. Right. This is what being on that side of the aisle looks I, like. I will say too. I wonder. I, this makes me wonder. Are there any anti-abortion liberals? That have to do the same thing. I bet there are. Yeah, that are just towing a line. Yep, they're just that's, they're that's just it. they're just in that party. 
and they know that they're never going to get any votes if they are like, hey, you know, I just really don't feel like. But the difference is that if you are on the on the on the other side of the aisle, nobody's rights are being restricted. Right, right. right. Yeah. And so the, the, there's, there's a key difference here. It's like, yeah, that's not my issue. I don't care about that issue. I actually prefer if people don't get, you know, I don't, I don't like it, but nobody's rights are being restricted. This motherfucker on the other side yeah. doesn't even care. Yeah. And yet he's going to restrict access to this medical procedure for women who might need it. Yeah. While at the same time trying to avail himself of the same thing that he purportedly despises for his own political and financial gain. But I think that the other side would argue the, re the rights that are being restricted are of the unborn child. Oh, Those yeah, are the rights would. that are being You're restricted. Right. That would be so, the argument. So that would be the argument against yeah, that. Right. Even though you and I, I think, both oh. agree that that child, yeah. until it has higher brain function, doesn't actually have rights because it's not a person. It's not a person. Yeah, right. But they would they would make a different argument. That's true. Yeah, it's a good point. Uh, 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 here we go. AK-47, the very best there is. When you absolutely, positively got to kill every motherfucker in the room, Except no substitutes. This is a right wing watch. This is Brian Fisher weighing in on the Vegas oh shooting. Brian Fisher in a while. I know. Kind of miss Brian Fisher. Silver haired fox has you know, been out of the limelight. I think I think a lot of these people, because they're not totes bashing Obama anymore, they don't have anything to say. They're just like they're just like now they're just like, Yep, we all hate gays and they're just yeah, boring, right? you know? It's just like, yeah. I wonder if like if, if if these guys, if you're right, these guys don't lose some of their luster, yeah. right? There's nothing for them to fight back on. Yeah. So uh, this is Brian Fisher is talking about the problem about guns in the Las Vegas shooting that we just didn't have as many as we should have had in that situation. I just go to Terry in Wichita, Kansas. Terry, welcome to Focal Point. What's on your mind? Talk to me. Got about 30 seconds. Hit me with your best shot. Well, my best shot is this. If we take the, uh, guns out of the hands of um, common citizens, this is going to happen more and more. What if uh, somebody that was next door to him who had a legalized handgun could have gone in there and stopped him before the police could ever have made it up to that room? Oh, let's talk about that. Oh, because Yeah, let's talk about that. So let's say I'm in my room <clears throat> masturbating. All right. Because yeah, yeah. I'm in a hotel room and that's what I do. That's what you do I, when you I, check in. I check in. I masturbate the entire time I'm there and then I leave. That's how it works. I literally don't understand I, what a hotel room yeah, would be I, for I, otherwise. I don't know what I make sure that the sheets stick to the bed. When I leave. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm in my hotel room and watching bad babysitters too. I have, like you I have my headphones on and I hear this loud thumping sound. Right. So I immediately stand up, reach for my gun, which clearly is something that I have as a, a different gun. I was been playing with the one right. gun. Yeah, one but is, that one's already fired. One is my pistol. What is it? One is my gun. One is my rifle and one is my gun. This one's for shooting and this one's <laughs> for, for fun. fun. I forget what it is. Anyway, I grab my, my pistol. I step out the door and then I kick the door in and I dirty hairy shoot this guy who's uh, murdering people in the street. That's what I do. That's yeah. that's what they think is going to happen. That's his fantasy. That's what they think is going to happen. That's the fantasy. Yeah. The reality is that an armed security guard in this circumstance was fired at 200 times yeah. and shot by this guy. Yeah. Like we we as armed citizens are not a SWAT team. Yeah. You're not a SWAT team. Just because you bought a gun at fucking mega shooty shoot world yeah. does not make you a fucking SWAT team yeah. guy. You don't know how to storm the castle, motherfucker. Yeah. Are you kidding me? That, what yeah. are you, Legolas? You're gonna like the count guy, the yeah. orcs as you kill them? <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? Are you gonna take a shield and then slide down? <laughs> Look, into the room? you're some normal guy. You're not kicking the fucking hotel room door down. They're built so you can't kick the no, door. No kidding. Right? That's per, that's the first thing, right? You'd have to somehow get in the room. Right. You're not going to get in the room. That's number one. Two, like you said, that this guy opened fire into that into that hallway. Just right. opened fire into the hallway. Right. He peppered the fucking security guard. What, like you're just going to get shot. What you need to do in that situation is the smart thing. You turn around. You go to your phone and you say, "There's a guy shooting next door to me." Right. I can see the flashes. I can hear the hear the the gunfire. I can hear the screaming. He's in the room right next yeah, to me. 23B, yeah. right? Now the cops know right where to go. Yeah. They don't have to fucking echo locate the shots, right? Exactly, right? right? And they yeah. and for a while they were they were doing this. The reason why they found this guy, the reason why they found him is because a smoke alarm went off. That's how they found him initially. The smoke alarm went off because all the gunfire. Jesus The Christ. thing that they said that in that meme that I was telling you about like last week, yeah. the thing that they were saying that, that, uh, that, 
he did. They said he disabled the smoke alarms. He specifically didn't, didn't do. Because right, that's and how they got that's caught. that's how they found him. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. We're going to bust in some average fucking. Look, the average guy who owns a gun is like you and I. Yeah. Right. How much training do you have with your pistol? Uh, I've training. Training? I only have a safety course that I, I would only consider that a safety course right. and a, an, a, an aiming course. <laughs> yeah, right. So I would say that I have zero minutes of actual training. Yeah, zero minutes of training. I have zero minutes. It doesn't prevent have, me from having a gun. I have zero tactical experience. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's what... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fucking storm the fucking castle. Yeah. I'm going to get killed. More guns in that situation is not a helpful thing. Also, the people on the ground, they're 400 yards away. You don't want to pull out a pistol with like a fucking oh inch and God. a half barrel. And start shooting at the windows of Mandalay shooting, Bay. Yeah, start shooting at Mandalay Bay. Even if you had a, even if you had a long gun, it would be a hard shot. Oh, it yeah. would be a, a, an unbelievably hard with shot. With a yeah, from with a long gun. Yeah, all right. Somebody with a at thirty an six with a scope yeah, right. and a fucking and, and a, a bench and rest. A, yeah, exactly. And right. a, the whole thing that you would need to shoot it at something really far away. Only a highly trained person would be able to pinpoint shoot. Now, if you were just going to want to throw fucking shells at something, or you know, throw bullets down there, rain lead. That's not an issue. Right. That's easy. That's easy. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, and again, I would say the same thing I've said. I, you know, I don't know what options would have existed. I think it's a good question to raise, Terry. Might have been difficult. The, the, the door is locked. I think the cops had to bust it down. I don't know how many people are going to do that, uh, even if they hear the shooting from in, inside the window. But that certainly would create the possibility if there was somebody next door with a weapon, maybe this thing could have been stopped before 55 people were dead. Again, the problem is not too many guns. But too few. No, how, no, no, how? no. The, the the problem is the problem is solved by a phone call. Yeah. How is too few? Like how many more guns? How many more guns do we need in that situation? What is the number? Is it a thousand more guns that would have solved that problem? I think every room needs to be rigged with booby trap guns. So if you know someone is committing <laughs> a, you just press the button downstairs. The, the the hotel people can do it. They just they're like they're like up. Oh, somebody's committing a felony in a room, and they can just press and it and kill gun. you. Yeah. Well, why don't we just why don't we build the rooms that just suck all the air out of the room? Just we like should, fucking vacuum yeah, chamber like, rooms. Like 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 every hotel is the cell or whatever. Yeah. Or, right. <laughs> The cube. The cube. The cube. That's the last the one cube. I'm thinking of. The cube. Every hotel room is the cube, and every hotel manager is Pinhead. I think that that would work out just fine. Okay, so what do you need? Besides a miracle. Guns. Lots of guns. This story is uh, also from Right Wing Watch. This is Dave Coach. Doc Coach. Not a coach. Dobbin Meyer. Now this fucking dimwit is wondering if the Las Vegas shooter was a government mind controlled assassin. Yeah, this is that MK Ultra stuff, right? But hang on, yeah, because to combine those, he is a government mind controlled assassin sent by God as judgment. Oh, that's right. That's right. right? Because you're right. Because he's not only sent by God f because he's going to kill everybody. Yeah. Or yeah, or maybe what he's. I think what he's trying to say is that like God is like Herbert Hoover. And he will control the government and created MK Ultra. Maybe he's like a politician that created MK Ultra. Uh, let's hear it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that Russ has told us uh, many times, and he's been with this. Uh... <laughs> okay. 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 So in big letters at the bottom with the Coach Live down there, Coach Dave Live in big letters. In uh, sans serif letters, all capital. <laughs> uh, looks like a Helvetica, maybe. It says MK Ultra is real. I love it. MK Ultra. It's it's like when you're driving through Indiana and they have it's that one God sign. God is real. Hell is real. Hell is real. Hell is real. Yeah, hell. right. Yeah, I'm in Indiana. Of course, hell is real. <laughs> you have to tell me. I can smell yeah. it. <laughs> uh, often here on our on our show about uh, mind control being used to create super soldiers. Uh, hidden assassins that are going to emerge. All this stuff that we don't we don't want to believe, and they show because you're making it up. I love when they're just. That I love when they a say super one soldier. That the, the that sixty four year old that, man, that super old dude, was like a super soldier. <laughs> what 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 was the point of his soldiering? Yeah, like wouldn't wouldn't the soldiering have to have some purpose, some some. It didn't do anything. You're right. Just like every other mass shooting yeah. in America, nothing happened. Yeah. Nothing changed. Yeah. Why would you have 
a soldier who's a super. You're wasting your super soldiers. Yeah. If you want to, you're wasting your super soldiers on mass murder. We don't care. Yeah. America doesn't care. We don't care anymore. It's yeah. done. It's fucking over. We yeah. fucking, we shook our heads and we, we behaved like we were real sad about we it. We're done. And nobody we cares. We're done. We don't give a shit. We're done with this. Yeah. You know, it's interesting this week. Um, last week, we talked about these three guys that were trying to blow up the uh, apartment building. Yeah, yeah. Because there were Somali guys there. were Somali there. guys yeah. in there. And those guys were terrorists, right? right, right. They were terrorists. And we posted this online. Um, we posted terrorists. And there were so many people that went out of their way to tell us, you know, aren't you glad you found white guys that could be terrorists? And I said, to, I, I got into an argument with one of them. And I was like, well, no, I, I'm not happy that they're white. I'm just pointing out that they're terrorists. That's all right. I'm doing. I'm not minimizing other terrorism because these three guys happen to be white. I just happen to call terrorist acts terrorism. All terrorist acts. Sure. Regardless of who you are, you should be called a terrorist, right? So when when somebody drives a fucking truck through Cologne and crushes a bunch of people and they and uh, and says I did it for ISIS, that's a that's terrorist terror. act, yeah. right? When a guy tries to change the mind of all uh, local apartment buildings by blowing one up by so that they don't rent to Somalis anymore because they don't want the Somalis in their area. That's terrorism, sure. right? This guy who rained fire down on that group, I don't know that I'd call that terrorism because there's no point to it. Yeah, there's well, no political right. action that's right. being... He's, right. He didn't leave some sort of manifesto that said... These are the reasons I'm doing this. Right. It's just, it's a puzzle. He's just a mass murderer. He's a, he's a, he's a serial killer, right? That's what he is. He's not a, but he's not, he's not a terrorist in the same, it's not, it's not the same thing. Cause there's no, there's no attempt for political gain. Right. It's right? a political thing. Right. Right. Yeah. And it's, and it's funny because like, like what's the purpose? What's the point? And that's what you're, that's what you're getting at. What's the point of this MK ultra thing, Right. The MK Ultra would make sense in a terrorism thing, right? Because you're trying to change something. Yeah, there's, trying, a, there's a political there's agenda. A, there's some a, a political right. agenda, right? Like, like you did it so that we, you know, shut down Congress and gave president, you know, all unilateral powers or something, right? That's yeah, why you right, would do it. Right. Yeah. Not just so everybody would just be like, huh, that's weird. Hey. Looks like ground chucks on sale. Yeah, which is which is America's reaction to yeah, mass shooting. Exactly. We are doing nothing about. Yeah, this. we don't do anything about it. There's no. It's not like we created this guy was an MK Ultra operative, so we would ban guns. Yeah. Well, and we're not going to do that. Happening, right. right. We're not going to do not it. That's not fucking happening. Do you know what we're going to do about this? Nothing. Nothing. Which is what we did last time. Yeah. There was a mass shooting, and last time there was a mass shooting, and next time there's a mass shooting. You know what we'll do about it? Literally nothing. 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 We don't care. Yeah. We don't, we shouldn't even pretend we care. We should almost stop covering it. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. If we don't care, just stop. There was a, uh, we, we played the the clip from it a while ago, but there's a, there's a guy who basically is being interviewed. He's a psychologist. He's like, don't start your broadcast with sirens blaring. Don't do, you know, he's like, he's like naming all the things that they do that in the media that they do right. to glorify these shootings. He's like, don't do any of that stuff. Just Report it locally and be done with it. Yeah. Don't mention the person's name and just move on. And nobody ever does that. We these these mass shootings happen constantly, over and over and over again. And why do they happen? They happen because they glorify the killer yeah. every single time. Just yeah. this picture of this white guy, my age, sixty four year old white guy, that all of a sudden goes bonkers and starts killing a bunch of people, a bunch of guns in his belt. Uh, I don't want to discuss his case. Here's what I want to. Uh, here's what I want. Why we have Russell on this morning? The idea that this is real. But the idea that now whether this guy was a mind controlled assassin, we don't know that. <laughs> now, I think we can. I, there's some things you could just rule out because the evidence for it you would need would be pretty fucking significant. Yeah, I mean, I feel like he's not a centaur. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. like well... We've got to rule that out. I have no it's reason to believe to he was out. a centaur. He might have been hung like a centaur. Right. We don't know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> if you're a centaur, yeah. right? Uh-huh. Do you get the man penis or the horse penis? You know what I mean? Like, do you get the man penis? Because... No, you I don't would, want the penis. I want, I, want to, I want to get the vagina. That's what I want to get. Yeah. I want to use... 
if, my enormous horse cock. Though. Would you have a horse cock or would you have a man pee? Because you would be laughed at by the other horses. They'd be like, oh my God. I'm like, laughed at by all the other a, men. If it's, a, if it's a man penis <laughs> on the size of that horse, are you right. kidding me? Yeah. No How kidding, would you right? even maneuver yourself to get it in there? Yeah, but I feel like I'm I'm all bottom half horse in yeah. this situation. Okay. Why would why would the fucking dong be the, the only thing? It's just like, you're like, yeah, I'm all... Oh, motherfucker. God damn it. God, got the embarrassing dong. Too. <laughs> <laughs> and he can't even put pants on. It's like, so God it's just damn like, it. oh, man, there's my uh, little penis. It's like, um, I went into the pool. <laughs> <laughs> I was really hoping you were like emotionally invested yeah. before you saw that. <laughs> it's like your first Tinder date. So I'm a centaur with a small penis. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say. I am not intimidating. Actually, actually, that would be a great <laughs> Tinder profile. A centaur, a centaur with a small penis? A centaur with a social justice penis. <laughs> That'd be great. But the idea that he was a mind control assassin is not far out. It's not far out, folks. Oh, no, you are no, mistaken. It, no, it's, it's, no, it's far out. Super far out. Because you're making it up <laughs> and then just deciding that it seems plausible with no evidence at all that that's plausible. Like none. We have no history of any mind controlled government assassins. We don't have any history of any of these people. I love these guys that watch like fucking the Manchurian candidate. Right? Just like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, look, 24 is a TV show. Yeah. It's just, are you fucking kidding me? And if you if you're if you're foolish enough to think that this is tinfoil hat stuff and this isn't going on, I, I don't know. Again, I don't I don't know what to tell you. We know this stuff is this stuff is real. And so as I, as I, well, how do we know uh, it? It just seems like a weird place to start an argument. <laughs> <That's all. laughs> okay. Listen, we all know it's real. And if you think it's not real, you're wrong about its realness. Okay. Now gonna, that we've established the reality of we're it, gonna have this, we're going to have this argument, but I've got to have this one premise. <laughs> you just got to give me one. <laughs> just give me one. Circle back around. Uh, the Antifa, these guys that are out in the, the what? The Antifa. Antifa. The Antifa. Street. Is it possible? Now, come on, folks. This this is the ultimate tinfoil hat. I understand that. Wait, you just said you knew it was possible, and now it's ultimate tinfoil hat. He went from like, and he, didn't he say not to dismiss this? He went as from tin like foil hat sixty stuff? to zero in very very He's short He's arguing of time. against himself at this point. But we saw Obama yeah. talk about a civilian police with military. Remember, remember that? Well, you didn't even say remember anything. That? What are you, a civilian police with military? Is that what he said? I don't know. Let's listen to what he said. Let's see what he said again. Civilian police with military. Remember, remember that? Police with military. Remember that? Yeah, police I remember. With military when before? Obama was like, hey, we should have a civilian police. <laughs> what did he power down halfway through? <laughs> Got to put more fucking double A batteries in him? Well, I, I think he's saying that there was going to be a civilian military force. But I don't remember. First off, I don't be that a doesn't make any sense. Force. Yeah. It would be so, that doesn't it make can't any sense. be yeah. two things that aren't yeah. definitionally yeah. opposed. It's going to be a matter have a anti sun matter. Moon. Yeah. Like what are you talking about? <laughs> remember that? No question. No. Does it mean that he created that civilian military force or is he now somehow in charge of that civilian military force? What are you talking about? What civilian military for? Obama's still in charge of a civilian military? Okay, I think I, I got this. Okay, oh, here we go. Really? So Obama uh -huh. went to the AARP. <laughs> and what he did was he took I love you, a man. survey of all the people who were, you know, busy doing things that also like guns. And he had them all mind controlled. And now whenever Obama wants, he just flips a switch somewhere and he lets one of these guys go off and shoot a bunch of people. Why? Well, cause what? Cause why, why? Cause he's in what? charge. I he's in charge. Tom. Is, oh, this is how he solidifies his power over the yeah, deep state. Right. This is, this, am I doing the it right? Thing is, is like, the thing is, is that? like, yeah, well there was, there was one person at that concert from the deep state and Obama wanted to show him who was boss. So, Damn. Yeah. That motherfucker doesn't fuck around. It's like fucking Joe Pesci. <laughs> fucking kill the whole room. And is that civilian military force we see out in the streets maybe being paid by Soros? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, he is. God damn it. He's controlled by Obama yes. as a mind-controlled yes. 
civilian military police force funded by George Soros. Also, George Soros, this is out for you. This is for you, buddy. I know you're a big fan of the show. If you could become a patron at the one million dollar <laughs> level, that would be super awesome. You know you could afford it. You know you could get become a one million dollar patron. It's not that much money, George. It, it's a lot to me, but it's not a lot to you. You would not believe. The patron extra is at a yeah. million dollars. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Anytime you want to come to the glory hole, <laughs> you are welcome, George. You will leave a satisfied yeah. customer. You will leave a satisfied septuagenarian. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, there's something, there's something else. <laughs> Somebody surfaced just restarted. <laughs> That wasn't us. That wasn't us. I'm going to listen to it again. That's their, oh, that's their office. Computer. That's the office. Hey, sorry, we needed to do an update during your show. <laughs> oh, it's fucking awesome. Out in the streets, maybe being paid by Soros. But folks, <laughs> there's something, there's something else. <laughs> it's punctuated. It's punctuated by that fucking <laughs> window sound. Oh, it's amazing. What's going on in the minds of these people? They, didn't just, they just ain't crazy. They just ain't. Doing this for money. They just ain't crazy. They just ain't crazy. They just ain't doing it for money. I don't know. What I have no idea what that means. I don't know what any of that You know, means. I'm going to have to call yeah. George Soros to help me fund No, that. I figured it out. What was rebooting was him. So we're back with Dan and Mark from How to Heretic. Uh, tell us about your show, guys. Yeah, exactly. How do I heretic? Well, we you're going to have to tune in. We're not going to tell you on your show. Oh, that's, fuck. That's, 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 right. that's our material. Oh. No, uh, so, the, the idea is uh, that there are a lot of, you know, there are good atheist shows out there. Your guys' show, you know, our my other show, Thank God I'm Atheist. All of these shows are great. But they're kind of a deep dive. They're kind of you, like if you haven't read your Hitchens and your Dawkins yet, you might not know yeah. like, uh, where where we're all coming from. So Mark and I wanted to do a show that basically like if you're fresh out of religion or, and, or still in a bit if or you're still, still in, yeah, or, or whatever, you know, what we want to do is take people who don't know how to live life on the outside of this religion thing and uh, just hold their hand a little bit, walk them through it. Let's, uh, let's have some fun together. So you're going to be a little less harsh than say we would about certain things like in the news and whatnot. You're going to try to, are you going to try to talk to them about apologetics and we're not, yeah, we're not even talking about news. There's no current events. It's not about that. What, what we're talking about is things like, you know, Mark and I were both raised Mormon. We, when, when, when we left, it was so great. We didn't know how to drink. So you know what? We'll teach you how to drink. Yeah. Teach, oh, I like this. This is like going to walk you through it. This is very you practical. Know, if you left yeah. your religion and you don't know how to gay, but you want to, we're we're going to teach you how to gay. We're going to teach you how wow. to. Wow. We'll teach you how to drugs. We'll teach you how to. <laughs> swear. <laughs> Whatever you need, you could teach we're them just going to get you into it. Uh, certain dances like the Charleston, you could teach those <laughs> things as well. Yeah. We're your audio uncles. That's what we do. That's what uncles are for. We're going to guide you through it. Yeah. So it's while it's fun to like tune into you guys and or, or you know, know any Lion Heath and listening to everybody take a shit on David Smalley. I think, <laughs> I think like the newer people you can are like, fit a lot of shit on such a little guy. Yeah. I'm just saying like from a surface area perspective, <laughs> it's, like, it's surprising. A lot, yeah. a lot of people are like, who, what, what's I just, I, and, and Dan and I come from, you know, from Mormonism, which is a very all or nothing proposition. It was, it was you know, all day Sunday. It was an activity every night of the week. It was. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. A, can we go back all day? Not just like an it. hour before football, but all day. Let me tell you, no, it's three hours uh, <gasps> of fully expected attendance, and then there's probably something after that, like you know, whatever. You, so, you got a calling or something that you're supposed to do. Something before that. It's it's a fucking nightmare. We weren't like Methodists or you know Episcopalians or whatever. We. It's this very all or nothing. None of those proposition. pussy religions. Yeah, none of that. <laughs> none of that <laughs> <Christmas Methodist>. <laughs> so you weren't a Unitarian, so you're right? Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Big slow on Unitarians Man, out of nowhere. Fuck <laughs> off, Unitarian. I kind of there though. Yeah. Unitarians are fucking. They all smell like patchouli. That is a wishy washy religion. <laughs> I know. Like, come on, man. Like, fucking grow a unicorn and get the fuck out of that thing. <laughs> what are you kidding me? 
That's Somebody right. tried to convince me years back to like, you would like the universal Unitarian like that. And I was like, no, I wouldn't. Still church, they sound right? terrible. You still have to go to church. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah it, fuck that. They're like, it's like church without God. I'm like, that's my house. Yeah. <laughs> like I, yeah. I there's pot roast right. at home. <laughs> what are you talking about? Is your house like organ music and incense? Because yeah. I'm into it. <laughs> yeah. Whose isn't? I, that's weird question. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, for pe- for people who came out of these all or nothing propositions, the, like you literally don't know what to do with your time. You don't know how to find a social structure. Like people from say assemblies of God or Scientology or, you know, any of these serious, serious mind fucks. There's a, you know, one of our segments is going to be how to Sunday. Yeah. Like now that you're nice. free. Nice. Shit, nice. What do you do on Sunday? Yeah, we'll teach you. Well, I mean, most folks who like it already know how to do football, but like we can teach you about brunch. Yeah, gay. <laughs> I love this. Are you, I feel like you should just play that Simpsons episode where he stops going to church and like walks around in his bathrobe and eats a waffle. Like, cover. Yeah. Everybody's yeah, like, stupid except me. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And that's a perfect Sunday. That's yeah. it. So, uh, so not only are we doing that, we're also going to discuss things like we we have a, a segment called uh, Graveyard of the Gods where we we dig up an, a dead and buried god and talk about how stupid that was, and it's all just sort of <laughs> a lot of fun <laughs> to talk about, just to sort of remind people because people, you know, when you're still sort of unpacking your own religious belief and you realize that what you've been believing your whole life is ridiculous, you then it's nice to have some context and say, you know what? People have believed ridiculous shit going back all the way to the beginning of people. And, uh, <laughs> and so, and we got that, we got, uh, what are some other, we segments? have, we have a fantastic philosophy professor who comes on as a guest and talks in very, very clear language about logical fallacies. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so we teach you how to think better. We teach you, we've got, we've got a, a, a psychotherapist who comes on and talks to you about like how to come out to family when to come out to family as, as an atheist or as a non-believer. And, and, you know, just, you know, we're just trying to ease people through the process and have a delightful time, uh, the whole time. Yeah. You know, it, it's interesting because when you're in a religion, you have that community around you, that sort of support structure that handles yeah. all, a lot of stuff in your life. And they're, they're there for you. And they're also that your sounding board for a lot of this stuff. This is a really great idea to create it. It's almost like you're creating a non-church community that gets a chance to sort of discuss what it's like to not be in church. It's not just for people who are newly out. Hopefully it's going to be fun for everybody. I think it's pretty funny. Uh, I'm, I'm adult, but Mark is a hilarious guy and we have a, we, we just have a lot of fun on the show. Cause I'm gay. Yeah. <laughs> <That's what> it <laughs> it's the gayness that really does I'm it. a sassy gay friend. You it can tell does. from my super gay yeah. voice. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> That's our <laughs> secret sauce. Uh, you don't want to see it or smell yeah, it, but it's yeah. fun. I'm there. Uh, and then, uh, and so hopefully it's good for everybody, but especially for pe- for people who, uh, you know, I've I've just had so many encounters with people who say, you know, and I'm I'm so happy to be done with church, but I just, you know, I don't know what to believe now. I don't know how to think in in the ways, you know, because. When you grow up in a religion, you weren't taught to think. Right. So like mm. with Mormonism, you hand over all this freedom and all this time and all this money and all this shit. And what you get for that is all the answers. Right. You don't have to think that's about... That's not a bad deal. I mean, if the it, answers were true, it's right. not a bad deal. It's, it's all bullshit, but it's not a bad deal. So when you don't have to think about anything, like you just have to obey the rules, read the shit, show up and pay your tithing. So when that goes away, there is, there is in some cases terror. Yeah. You yeah. Know, like, how do I, I, I don't even know how to engage with this frightening world that I was taught was evil. What do I read? Like, how do I, how do I date wow. outside my religion if I've never even thought of that? Right. You know, and none of this would have occurred to me. None of this would have occurred to me in a million years. I would have just been like, yeah, I don't go to church. I just get to stay home and it, masturbate. Like, <laughs> wahoo. It, for, for, for people like that, it's, it's an easier, smoother transition because you've already been fucking up. Like you didn't, you, you were probably having sex already and you were probably drinking already and all of that sort of stuff. But no, for those, I, those are still on my bucket list. I, okay. I hear good things. <laughs> when yeah. you get around to it, tune into our show and we'll <laughs> give you a little bit of help. And by the way, Tom, both of those things, you should have a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Just a rule of thumb. Yeah. Sex, drinking, and ayahuasca ceremonies. You, you get your own special sex buckets. You can get them at adamandeve.com. <laughs> 
you get <laughs> half off your own sex <laughs> half off a bucket. So yeah, did you guys so. ever see that amazing documentary, The Devil's Playground? Which yeah. is sad yeah. and amazing about the kids that go on Rumspringer. Rumspringer, yeah. Rumspringer. It's an amazing documentary, yeah. And just think of that in a slightly more modern context where people leaving something as, as you know, life detailing as Mormonism are just kind of, you know, if, if they have a faith crisis or whatever and walk out into the broader world, it can literally be shocking. And, yeah. Is the and, temptation to just go hog wild with like yes. every opportunity? Yes. Or is, I, and that's, okay. that's part, a part of our thing is like, you know, when a lot of people leave, uh, like for instance, any, any religion that doesn't allow you to drink and then you go out and, you know, you leave it when you're in your mid twenties, mid thirties, whatever, and it's time to start drinking. And all of your friends, all of, you know, everyone that you're going to meet, who's already a drinker, they already know what they're doing. They've, they've been through college. They know they know the binging and they know their limits and they know the stuff. They did all the throwing up. It's behind them. Right. Yeah. So like, right. Yeah. No, that's a good <laughs> point. Yeah. You know, it took me a lot did... of years to learn how to drink without being a fucking train wreck. Right. Exactly. So we, hopefully we'll give you like sort of the, the inside lane for that so that you don't have to go through all of the bullshit, all of the vomiting and all of the nastiness. And we'll just get you straight. We'll, we'll, we'll jump you straight into experienced. How long, I, I, how long were both of you in Mormonism? I w well, I so I left it uh, right before I was supposed to go on a mission, and that's like seventeen or something. It's not. It was nineteen when I was around. Uh, it's it's n since been lowered to eighteen if you want to. Uh, and so I was nineteen, having a bit of a crisis of faith, and uh, you know I was like, shit, am I going to go out into the world and preach something that I'm not positive about? And that felt really weird. So I went and talked to my bishop, who's actually sort of the equivalent of a parish priest, but. Uh, but they call him a bishop. And I, and I basically said, look, I'm having this crisis of faith. And he was like, well, maybe, you know, let's let blah, blah, blah. Uh, it didn't work. Uh, none of the things that we tried worked. And that's when I left. Honestly, like, what do you try when you're having a crisis of faith? I would think well, that like, once that door gets cracked open, it's probably really hard to shut that door. Well, here's for me, it was like, I just did. I literally spent about six months intensely, always praying and reading scripture and basically begging God to uh, to to come back into my life, and I went, you know, I went through this whole process. And after six months, I was just exhausted. So that's when I went to my bishop and I said, "Look, I don't know what to, what else to do. I don't feel God's presence. I don't feel like I've been, you know, there's there's this promise in Mormonism that if you pray enough, the God will reveal Himself to you." And I didn't feel like it was happening. And he said, "You know what? Maybe it'd be good for you to go through the temple, which is a big deal in Mormonism to go through the temple, and you have to have a." a recommend. You have to uh, go through a, an interview with the bishop and uh, and be recommended for this. And you have to, you know... It's Which is a, very probing. It's face-to-face -face, It's face -to -face confession. Right. Exactly. So I said, great, let's do that. We sat down. He opened up the binder that has all of the questions that he has to ask me. And the first one was, do you believe in God, the Eternal Father, and in His Son, Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Ghost? And I said, well, I, I don't know. And then he just stared at me for a while. <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, went, he's looking at his answer key and he's like, yeah, wait a minute, it's, see, it's I don't just know my here. Scantron yeah. just has yes marked. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly it. And I said, oh, I have to answer yes, don't I? And he kind of nodded and I went, oh, well, okay, goodbye. Oh. And I literally like stood up, shook his hand and walked out and never walked back in. Wow. So, and and in my case is, is fairly different because I, I grew up in a, in a pretty hardcore Mormon family and also it's an extremely fucked up family. And it, it, those two things aren't necessarily always together. They're uh, usually together, but they're not always together. It's frequent. So, uh, around age 10, I started realizing there was something different about me. And I was terrified of any concept of gay, but it, it was about that time that I realized I was different from the other boys and I'd better bury this shit as deeply as possible. But I, I knew at that point I didn't have a place at the table. And so I just kind of had to live behind enemy lines for the next like, you know, eight or nine years until I could get myself out. So my, I, I, I saw my lack of belief as a, as a failing rather than net what I see it as now which is, thank God that was the case. That <laughs> I didn't believe because that yeah. saved my bacon in the end. But I, I had to go to, you know, I still had to go through all the motions for like eight more years. I had to go to church three hours every Sunday. Wow. You had to fake it for eight years? Oh, yeah. I, I, I honestly shit. don't think I would have survived if I'd come out as gay. 
because there was a pretty high mortality rate in the 70s and 80s for gay people in in Mormon country. It's still we have a massive youth suicide epidemic uh, because for this reason, which is, again, part of what Dan and I are trying to do with this show is just bounce some some kindness and some information yeah. and some help over the transom yeah. to somebody that may be in you know rural Idaho that could really use this. Yeah. And, and you know, also we want to make sure that people understand that like it's not darkness and and misery out in the world when you lose God. It's yeah. it's fun and joyful and there's a there's a great life to be had. Uh and and all but the constant thing that people hear when they're in religion is how miserable atheists are and yeah. how, how yeah. the devil has their soul. And it's clinical and cold and scientific. Right. And there's yeah. no there's no joy. They just feel this this emptiness in their soul and blah, blah, blah. And fuck that. Yeah. My life is about fun. It's interesting because uh, uh, Julia Sweeney has a book called Letting Go of God. It's and great. She, and yeah, it's, it's amazing. And her audio version of that book is wonderful. It's just her doing it on stage. And she talks about a moment when she finally sort of let go and she was walking across her yard and she wasn't sure how she was standing on the ground because she thought for her whole life that God kept people on earth. (laughs) And she was just like, how am I not flying off into this sky? And then she's like, wait, gravity, like duh, gravity works. But she, but there's a moment, you know, that you can clearly tell, like that was, that was the thread that kept it all together. That kept her whole world together. And when somebody unravels that, that's a big fucking deal and it can be really difficult and it can cause some serious anxiety and to have something like something that you guys are going to put out here is, I think that's a great resource for people. Well, thank you. Yeah, we hope so. Uh, we may not be good at it. I don't know. You'll yeah. have to, everybody will have to make their own call on that one, yeah. but, uh, but we're doing it. So uh, yeah, yeah. I, I have high hopes for it. I think I, I, I really, uh, we've had a lot of fun recording it. We've got three episodes out now and uh, more t- to come once a week and uh some good ideas for the future so i think uh, i think we're gonna have a lot that's of fun. great where can people find it if they're gonna look for it uh in my house just come on over <laughs> uh, so our website is howtoheretic.com yep uh where our episodes are there's also a link to the patreon page we're on all itunes and you know whatever pod blaster you uh you want hopefully we're we're up there now and uh yeah, it, it, just how to heretic. Just search that, and you should find us. Wonderful. Well, we'll put links to your show and to uh, to your social media on this week's show notes. This is three eighty two, gentlemen. Thanks for joining us. It was an absolute blast to have you on. We hope to have yeah. you on again. Thank you oh, very much. So much fun. Uh, yeah, let's do this again a lot. What a yeah. pleasure, guys. <laughs> I, like we, I think we're coming back uh, every week now. Yeah, yeah we're that's just great. We're just going to start showing up. That's and I'm, great. I'm, I'm here to nights. validate any of your gay terrors or fears. Let yeah. me know what's happening. <laughs> I don't know what my gay terrors are. Yeah. I, I'd have to invent oh, some. Yeah. We'll, we'll help you discover them. Yeah. I, know what, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. know what they are. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. So I wanted to clarify uh, something that I said last week. We were talking last week about uh, a group of people who started a support group uh, that is a secret support group for people who have been sexually assaulted by atheist community leaders. Um, The reason why they created a secret secret support group is because they are afraid of backlash from the community. So they, uh, they keep this information private so that they don't receive any backlash from the community because of it. One of the people in this group contacted me. Um, they are going to remain anonymous, but I know who they are. They they did not remain anonymous to me, so I know who they are. And so they uh, they contacted me and talked to me about this group. And I think it's an important thing for people to understand that something like this exists in our community. We're not above this. Uh, and it's appalling. It's absolutely appalling that something like this would have to exist in our community, uh, especially a community that calls out constantly the uh, the hypocrisy of the Christian and other religious organizations that commit sexual atrocities all the time. It's appalling that our community is following suit. So uh, on this week's show notes, I'm going to put a link to an email. That email will get you in touch 
It's an anonymous email that was just created specifically for this. We'll get you in touch with someone in that support group. So if you are someone who has questions about it, or if you were uh, someone who wants to be a part of the support group, you can have access to it on this week's show notes. It's episode 382. I'm not going to mention what the email is here. You can go to our website, dissonancepod.com, episode 382, and you'll be able to find that email and you'll be able to correspond with one of the people who's involved in this group. We want to thank our patrons. We want to thank all our patrons, of course. We want to thank our most recent patrons. Yes, Honey Buns, Needs Coffee, Rapella, Bex, Kayla, Jody, Ryan, the unapologetic SJW, Richard, Chris, Matt, Exotic Wine Travel, Joe, Graham, Defend University of Florida from Nazis and Racists on October 19th. I love that. So specific. <laughs> it's very specific. Uh, Jacob and Daniel, thanks so much for your generous donations. We really do truly appreciate all the support. Um, it's it's really It really is touching. Thank you so much. So uh, Tom and I, in about a month, are going to be attending Skepticon in Sydney, Australia. We'll be in Sydney. Tom and I will be in Sydney for three days. We'll be landing on Friday and at the conference on Friday night. Uh, there Saturday all day and there Sunday all day. We'll be doing a live cognitive dissonance at the, at the on the Saturday there, and we'll be doing a live citation needed with the GAM guys on that Sunday. Uh, but on one of the nights, there just happens to be a dinner on one of those evenings. And Tom and I will both be in attendance. It's on Saturday, November 18th. It's going to be $130 a p- uh, uh, per person. There's a three course meal and there's all drinks, wine, beer, and soft drinks. So you get a three course meal and a wine, beer, and soft drinks. Somebody's going to have to get rolled out of there. For That's $130, I can drink $130 worth of beer. They're also going to have a special guest magician they by the name are. of best acquaintance, Eli Bosnick. <laughs> we have musical entertainment from Ryan Sheehan and, um, and the annual skeptics awards will also be announced. Yeah. So if you're, if you're going to be going to that event to check us out, you might want to consider getting tickets. I know I'm sure after the dinner's over, Tom and I will be at the bar in that area watching Eli Indeed. pull coins out of people's ears. So that should be a lot of fun, <laughs> but check it out. If you're interested in going to the, to the conference, or if you're interested in, in checking out this dinner, um, we'll put a link on this week's show notes. Uh, so you could check it out. Um, we are super excited about that, that, uh, those live shows that we're going to be putting on down there. And we're also excited to, to visit the continent. I cannot wait. I, I've been looking forward to this trip all year. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you can make it to that conference, absolutely make yeah. it to that conference. Come find us. Yeah. We'll buy you a drink. Yeah. We'll buy you a drink for sure. We got an image of the horror that is this time of year. We're going to post it on this week's show notes. You could check it out. It's 382. Tim had said um, when we were talking last week about uh, the Vegas uh, shooting and the crackpot theories, uh, he said, I agree. You can't just not respond to crackpot assumptions regarding Vegas. The very point is that he was able to do this despite not having any training. Right. Right. That shows the you how dangerous yeah. having these weapons in the yeah. hands of people are. Exactly. Know? We got a message from Matt. I just want to read this. Matt said, all right, I'm about to go on a very vomity ferry ride. <laughs> this is an hour long and 50% of the people lose their stomach content. My God. Where are you? This is, I'm relying on your podcast to distract me. Report back in, Matt. Did we distract you enough so you didn't throw up? Seasickness is genuinely the worst. I, I can't imagine being on a ferry where I know it's a 50-50 shot oh, that you're going to get seasick. That's awful. Take a seaplane. Oh, what man. the fuck? Next week, I'm not going to tell you who the guest is. We are super excited and we hope that this guest goes through. It would be... It's it's a dream guest for both Tom and I right. to have on this show. We're hoping that the dream guest were able to solidify all this and have the dream guest on next week. But you're going to want to check out next week's show Uh we're hoping that it's going to be a really good show um, and we get our dream guest on. So it we'll should be, be incredible. It will we're be very exciting. Excited. We're very excited. This is a teaser. We know we're teasing you. Yeah. We don't want to make it hard. You can go to adamandeve.com yeah. at adamandeve.com <laughs> and our Gloria <laughs> checkout. You can relieve that hard, tight feeling yeah. for 50% off. <laughs> <laughs> relieve it on your sex swing. Your free sex swing. <laughs> we, uh, 
we are excited about it, but we also uh, we also want to want to not mention it too, just because if it doesn't go through, it's one of those things right. that you know it just didn't go through, and we got everybody's hopes up for nothing. So we're hoping that it goes through. We also want to thank Dan and Mark, great from guests, the How to Heretic podcast. Um, what a uh, what an excellent pair of guys. Really funny, just really funny, and I'm sure their podcast is going to be great. I'm going to put it on my uh, on my phone so I can listen to it because it sounds like a lot of fun, even right. for somebody who doesn't believe and hasn't believed for a very long time. Right. So check it out. It'll be on this week's show notes, three eighty two. So that's going to wrap it up for this week. Uh, we're going to leave you like we always do with the Skeptics Creed. Credulity is not a virtue. It's fortune cookie cutter, mommy issue, hypno Babylon bullshit. Couched in scientician, double bubble, toil and trouble, pseudo quasi alternative, acupunctuating, pressurized, stereogram, pyramidal, free energy, healing, water, downward spiral, brain dead pan, sales pitch, late night info docutainment. Leo Pisces, cancer cures, detox, reflex, foot massage, death in towers, tarot cars, psychic healing, crystal balls, Bigfoot, Yeti, aliens, churches, mosques, and synagogues, temples, dragons, giant worms, Atlantis, dolphins, truthers, birthers, witches, wizards, vaccine nuts, shaman healers, evangelists, conspiracy, doublespeak, stigmata, nonsense. Expose your signs. Thrust your hands, bloody, evidential, conclusive. Doubt even this. The opinions and information provided on this podcast are intended for entertainment purposes only. All opinions are solely that of Glory Hole Studios, LLC. Cognitive dissonance makes no representations as to accuracy, completeness, currentness, suitability, or validity of any information, and will not be liable for any errors, damages, or butthurt arising from consumption. All information is provided on an as-is basis. No refunds. Produced in association with the local Dairy Council and viewers like you.